Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create a pattern such as this one using Grasshopper and uh, Rhinoceros. So let's go to Grasshopper. We have this file. We're going to work on this facade over here. Uh, I'm going to go to Grasshopper. Uh, first, I want to set up a grid here. Let's go to Vector, bring a point. If I connect Series to Point, it's going to create a set of points. Let me connect them to Y. So it's going to be over there. If I bring another series connected to Z, uh, it's going to be in YZ plane. And if I graphed one of Y or Z, it's going to actually make a set of grid. Uh, this is getting better. Now I just need to adjust the inputs here. So it's going to actually start from this corner. On the y side you see now it starts from zero this is negative one negative two to negative five so if i assign negative five to the start point on the y direction the grid is going to start here i'm going to assign like five i'll go to slider i'm going to go with a floating number uh, two digits minimum is going to be negative five this should go to 2. That's good. Now I want to put negative 5. We can change it if we need later. So now it exactly starts from uh, this interior side of this wall. And how about I make the points a little bit closer to each other. And for that I need to change the step size. So I'm going to go with for instance point 6. 60 centimeters for the step size on both uh, y and z directions right and now I just need to adjust the number so it's going to fit this uh, area so I'm going to go with maybe 30 as for the number of points on the y direction 30 seems to be too much I'm going to go with like 28 uh, that's better and on this other side how about I go with like 6 or something assign it to c uh, I can go with 7 or 8. Um, if I hide the roof here, I'm going to hide the roof layer. You see 8 is actually uh, right where the roof is, so I want to go with that 7. I'm going to move this back to 7. If you want, you can also work with the start point here. Uh, so for instance, if I assign like 2, 5, so it's going to uh, move these points by 25 centimeters above the ground that goes there so this seems a nice set of grid to work with after we create the pattern we can still change these values how about i change this negative 5 to negative 4.8 so it's gonna actually have a little bit of clearance on this side so the grid is uh, inside the wall that all seems good uh, i want to bring one scribble. This whole thing here is responsible to create a grid for me. I'm going to group these items. Just to show you what's the outcome here, if I connect PT to a panel, you see that this is a list inside a list, right? I actually want to flatten, so I want to get rid of that dashed line. I want to flatten this. Now all the items are in one big list with 196 elements. So this seems good. What I want to do is that I want to use my customized shape over here. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to four viewports. You see that I have the left instead of right viewport on this side because I want to look at this uh, left side of the building. Okay, I'm going to go here and I want to uh, start in zero, 00, which is here. And I want to draw my custom shape using polylines. A very simple shape. You can, of course, work with your customized panels. And I want to maybe scale it. So it's going to be a bit smaller. Uh, we can change the number later. Okay. Now, uh, we want to actually populate this shape all over those points. So I need to select this, go to Grasshopper. Under Parameters, we can bring one Curve option. And I want to set one curve. That curve is now set. You can also internalize the data. Next, I want to actually move 
this shape all over the point so curve goes to G for geometry point goes to T for motion so now you see that shape is actually now in all over the points okay it seems good here except for the one at the top how about I reduce the grid size a little bit or I can increase the grid size and get rid of one last item here so I can go with six values on this side and uh, the grid size could be 0.7 or 0.8 actually 0.7 should work better and now uh, I want to change the scale of the shape so it's going to be a little bit bigger maybe 1.2 I need to set this again set one curve uh, that's now good going from all the way down here to there I want to change this point to 5 to point 2 and now it's fitting better in this area on this side I need a little bit more uh, kind of distance here so how about I go with negative 4.7 or negative 4.6 this side seems good uh, I need to check the other side of course we need to reduce the numbers to like 25 maybe or 24 and uh, the last icon here is not uh, fitting the best now there are a couple of things I can do I can like change uh, the settings in order to fit them the best way possible uh, or I can do this it's gonna be easier I want to change the step size a little bit for my y direction I wanna put it on like 0.65 instead of 0.7 and I wanna connect this to the grid size I can go a little bit bigger so something between 0.68 to 0.7 or even 0.69 if I put this on 0.69 on this side I need to go with a negative 0.6 or 0.65 so now it's fitting uh, it's almost fitting here or I would better go with 0.68 and I can change this side to like negative 4.5 actually so now you see the pattern fits in that area it's all good so we are getting there now that it's all good you can hide that original curve also you can internalize the data here so this is all better uh, I can also hide the point we don't need to see them what we are interested in is the final pattern now uh, next thing I want to actually make some rotations to look like this uh, I want to first maybe create a group here I'm gonna go with a scribble this is populated customized shape and this can be a group Uh, next I want to rotate them as mentioned so I'm gonna go with rotate actually I also should ungroup this and group them again because I added some elements let's go to rotate uh, the items that I want to rotate are the moved geometry so that goes there but now you see they're rotated in a different way that's what I had in mind and now I actually need to define the plane here a plane is made out of points and normals that's what it means here so I want to go with plane normal uh, the points to create the plane normals are actually uh, the points that we had here when I connect this to this it's going to create a number of actually planes here I can hide this and I want the normal 
to be on the x direction to be extruded in that side because uh, the red line here shows my x direction in Rhino. So I want to bring one unit x that goes to z for the normal and that goes to p. Now you see each of these items is rotated in, on itself by a value which is 0.5 times pi which is 90 degrees. Uh, this is the original pattern. This is the rotated pattern. I want to hide the first one so we can see the last one. Now last thing I want to do is that I want to change the amount of rotations for some of these items to 180 and 270 degrees. So let's go back here. That means to the angle I need to assign a series, a set of numbers. Let's put that there. I want to go with series. How many rotations do I want? As many as I have actually the points, right? So I can get the length of this list to know the number of the points. That goes to my count. I can bring a panel here. Now you see we have actually 144 numbers because we have uh, 144 points. Now, what we want to do is that finally this series is going to be assigned to rotation. Uh, the way the rotation works in Grasshopper is that it's kind of a number multiplied by pi. Half a pi is 90 degrees, right? So I want to rotate this shape by 90, 180 to 70 degrees, which is half a pi, one pi, one and a half pi, and so on. So that means the step size here on this series is going to be 0.5. That goes to the step size. And the outcome of this should be multiplied by pi. So it's going to understand it in Grasshopper because it doesn't work with degrees. Uh, I'm going to go with pi. Uh, this goes here. And the outcome of this multiplication should go to the rotation. As soon as I do that, you see that actually if I want to show it to you here, and this is half a pi, one and a half pi. So each of the items are rotated by 90 degrees. And we can check it here. Right now you see that the amount of rotation is different each time. Uh, you can also play with like the list items. For instance, if you want the rotation to be a little bit different here, uh, what we can do is that we can go to sets. We can go to list, for instance, we can reverse the list. I can reverse this list and then assign it to rotation. And now you see they are actually a little bit different. So let me group these items, bring one scribble. This is my rotation degrees or the amount of rotation. I can make a group here. And these three items are, if I bring a scribble, are re responsible for rotation. So I want to create a group here. That all seems good now. Uh, last thing I want to do is that I want to have a surface and cut these objects out of that surface. I believe I should have a surface here. Let me check. Yes. And I want to hide these items. Okay. So this surface, I'm going to read it in a grasshopper. And then I want to cut these elements out of that surface. So let's do that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to bring one surface parameter. grab this surface and set one surface. So now this is an object in Grasshopper. Feel free to hide that in Rhino. We don't need it in Rhino. I can internalize this data. And finally, I just want to split those uh, pattern, those customized shapes from this surface. So I want to go with the split, split surface. Surface goes to S, the curves from G geometry go to C, uh, which is for curves. 
so now this is my uh, splitted facade I'm gonna uh, bring one scribble split facade I want to grab these three items and group them this is my whole script uh, we can hide this surface we don't need it so feel free to save your file and uh, now I want to bake this uh, split facade into Rhino I want to go with bake and I want to actually put them uh, on this layer which is glass under option 2 actually uh, I'll go here let's say OK I'll do the rest in Rhino so uh, I want to close grasshopper file now in Rhino you see that they are all in this uh, glass 2 layer which is a sub layer for my wall uh, and you see that I can select these items separate from each other so I want to grab not these small ones but this one and I want to move it to my option 2 okay uh, the reason this is option 2 is that I had already designed a different facade here so I want to turn them off and I want to show this other option I want to grab this surface and I want to extrude surface as a solid yes and it's going to be 0.3 there we go and I can move this to my option 2 layer okay and uh, the rest is the glass part so we can actually turn everything else off uh, I can also turn these off and this one I can turn option 2 off only the glass 2 part so I can group these glass surfaces so let's do that uh, I want to group these items and if you want to extrude them as well that's totally fine we can extrude them extrude surface by maybe about 3 centimeters for the glass part solid yes that's all good but I need to move them to my glass tool layer now I can group everything which is here and I can turn on the other layers floor roof and everything okay yeah now you see that I have already assigned two different materials uh, I can go to this view the interior view and I can change this to rendered 